And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a little game called Fallout Shelter, the board game. Now, I didn't, when, before this was announced, I didn't even know there was a Fallout Shelter game, which is different than Fallout. I, I played a little bit of Fallout in my time. I understand a little bit about the vaults and you know, all, all that goes on in there. But Fallout Shelter, where you build your own shelter, uh, is a very different game than Fallout, and this is a board game based on that. So I have to be honest, even though this here came from Fantasy Flight Games, I was not jazzed about it. it this tin also kind of annoyed me, and I just wasn't expecting it to be that fantastic. It's Once I opened it, read the rules, so it was a little worker placement game, was a little more interested. Let's see if it's good. Please be good. In this game, you have the top level of the vault will have six cards that are going to be placed there. They're the six same starting cards. Each player is going to take one of these where you keep track of your resources, electricity, food, and water. You also start with two workers. The goal of this game is to get the most happiness. And so you have happiness on many of these tokens that you're going to be getting over the course of the game. And some item cards might give you happiness, like this one here. Get one happiness for every two of your dwellers that you have at the end of the game. So how do you play the game? Well, players are going to take turns placing their workers around the board, starting with whoever has the first player. There are many different spots in the vault to place your workers, and you have a spot even in your own level that you can place your worker. When you place a worker on a spot, you will get the resources shown at top in the green. So if you place here, you get a water. Two electricity, one electricity, two food, one food. If you go over here, there are some red costs. You pay a water or you pay two water, and this is to take an item card. And this is to refresh the item cards, then take an item card. And so item cards are going to help you. So for example, the Kali here, you can exhaust this once per round to exchange water and energy at the rate shown. I might have two water, and I might want to change it in for four energy. You will be using these green cubes to keep track of how much you have of the different resources. Going over here allows you to pay three food to get another worker. So you just bring another worker out that you'll be able to use on the following turns. This lets you upgrade one of your workers. Here you can get another worker by paying uh, water, food, and wounding your worker. When you wound a worker, you lay him down, and on a future turn, a, wo a wounded worker can't be used, except they can be placed at the medic bay here, where they'll heal and come back. So basically, it takes them out for a round. Here, you'll take the first player marker for the next round and upgrade your character to an L. Now, I mentioned upgrading twice here, and that's because when you upgrade a character, at the end of a round, when you pull all your people back, I would stick this person, if I upgraded him to an L here, if I just upgraded him, I could stick him at any letter I want. You do this because when you place somebody off and they're on top of one of these letters and you put them on the corresponding letter, so if I had an A, for example, and I put them here, you get double. So here I would get four food instead of uh, two, and here I would get two food instead of one. And an upgraded worker can do all sorts of things. If I, if I had sent an upgraded worker to different areas, let's say this room was on here, and you need to put two people out, you pay one food and you get a person. But if one of those people comes from a C, I would get two people instead. Speaking of which, you can build these rooms. You would do so by going to your own area. You can only go here if you have the resources to build one of those rooms, and you'll receive two happiness, and you can build the room. The cost for the room is at the bottom. So here it costs two water and two electricity, and you'll stick it in, in your level. You initially stick it next to your doors here, but after that, if you build more rooms, you can stick them next to other rooms that you have. Now, between rounds, players are going to roll dice for each row. Once you roll dice, you look at the number rolled five, and starting here, one, two, three, four, five, you're going to place the top enemy card. This enemy card goes over the spot. It covers up that spot, and players can no longer use that spot. They can, however, go here and attempt to fight the enemy. Most enemies are fought using a dice roll, so you simply roll two dice. If you roll nine or higher, you defeat the enemy, and you will get these rewards, and the enemy will come off at the end of the round. If you do not roll that number, then you'll lose and your character becomes wounded and they'll need to go get healed. 
Uh, there are many cards in the game, mostly weapons that will allow you this one, for example, the 10 millimeter pistol. When you fight, you can add one to your die results. And there are many different uh, weapons in here. Uh, for example, we have power armor, which you can uh, spend one energy to count as if you're trained for that threat, getting double back for it. The fat man here, you can re-roll the dice. The plasma pistol, you can add two. The shotgun, you can add two. The laser rifle, you can add two. The minigun, you can add three to your roll. So there's a lot of different ways to help beat these bad guys. Some bad guys, uh, uh, or some problems um, are not even going to be fighting, but they may require you to do something else. Like, for example, if there's a power outage, and I love how this looks. You put the power outage, and it actually turns the background black. You just need to pay two electricity to get rid of it to get one happiness. Now, you're going to roll once per row, so even if your own buildings are out here, well, let's say I roll the die for the second one here. I rolled a 10, the middle card 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to put a card and shut down my own. If you roll seven, the sevens are never shut down. If you roll a number that's not there, that will also not happen. And if you roll a number where there already is an enemy there, you're not going to put another card on top of that. So these cards are going to show up, and you don't want them in your row because at the end of the game, they're minus one point each. Players will continue to do this until one player has built six cards in their vault or to all these threat cards are on the board. At that point, it's the final round. Like I said, you add up the happiness that you've gotten, plus any of the cards in this item deck that give points, minus one point for each threat card still in your vault, and whoever has the most points is the winner. My biggest negative to the game is that it comes in a tin, and I know, I know the tin is thematic and all, and it's not a horrible tin, but tins easily get dented for me, and that's why I don't like them. It also has a plastic insert in here, which works fine, but uses up a very small amount of the tin. But it does even show you where all the pieces go, so there's that. I really like the artwork in this game. You know, it shows all the different rooms, reactor room, radio station, living quarters, garden, game room, weapon workshop, etc. Nuka-Cola bottler. And I really love these cards here. They don't need to be clear, but it's neat because it shows somebody in the spot there, the scorpion in the room, and it shows the background. And that's just a neat concept that works really well. Uh, the all kinds of item cards here. I enjoy the variety amongst these. Here, I can exhaust my turn to train a dweller in perception, a P. Or I can, if I get a stim pack, I can exhaust this once per turn to heal somebody. Or this dog, or this thing, at the end of the game, I gain one happiness for each pet I have. And there's, so there's different ways to score points. There's no major, giant way to score points. But I also want to point out the, even the little dudes that you get. Every single one of these is a different miniature, which is pretty neat. They don't have to be. It's just neat to see that they went that extra step. So yeah, other than the tin, I'm very happy with the components. When we played this game, Z Garcia's statement kept sticking with us that Fallout Shelter was better than it had a right to be. Uh, it just, it's a solid little game. It, you put out the workers, you get the resources you need, you build rooms, you get weapons, you put them out. Meanwhile, the threats are showing up and you can fight them. Now realize there's luck involved, for sure. The threats are going to come out and you can go fight them. But I don't mind that luck because there are many ways to mitigate the threats. You have different weapons and such. And if you lose against the threat, well, your worker's out of commission for a second. You just put them in and get them back out the next round. I don't know how strong the replayability is 10 games in, right? The It seems pretty obvious you want to get more workers because more workers gives you more stuff. You want to build buildings in your own vault that other people are tempted to come because if someone else uses your rooms, you get a resource of your choice. And you may build something that no one cares about or someone else builds something similar to, so now there's more competition for that. But at the end of the day, it's light and short enough that I don't mind. It's a 45-minute game, but it feels very involved the whole time. I think it scales well, although I'm going to argue it plays better with more players because there's more rooms and you have more choices of places to go to. Although you also have more people getting in your way and going to the spots you want. Uh, I 
you know, I wouldn't mind seeing more threats, more item cards maybe in the future added in, but as a small little game that's a lot of fun, and whether or not you know anything about the Fallout universe and or this Fallout Shelter game specifically, I think most people are going to like this one. It's a light, fun, fast worker placement. It's an easy one. I, I hope that a lot of people who like this game will buy the board game, this one here, and play it and realize how awesome board games can be. And this one here where you have the ability to upgrade your characters and then place them out, getting double stuff, it's a simple concept. And it essentially is not as good as it sounds because you have sometimes have to put a worker somewhere to upgrade that worker. They then go somewhere and get double, and you could have just gone that space twice. But that may not always be available. And so the upgrading system works really well as a nice way to get around that. And if you upgrade people, and later on people build rooms, and this room gives me two electricity and a water, and I can double that and get four electricity and two water, it just feels like, yeah, I really pulled a cool thing off. And then all the items, the cute pets and the cool weapons. It's a silly little game. I mean, there's violence as you fight off these threats, but it's not that strongly. And it's not like Fallout. It's, it's simple uh, app-type graphics. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this one. A lot of fun. That's Fallout Shelter, the board game. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.